Hello and welcome to this episode of Fellowship in Essential Oils. This week, we're going to dive into basil, Liz. Sweet basil. Let's be yes. really, really succinct about that because if you go onto the internet, people will say, talk about holy basil and sweet basil as if they're the same herb and they're very, very much not. So I'll try not to get onto my soapbox too much. But next we'll talk about holy basil, but it's almost impossible not to talk about the two in tandem because they're so mm. different. It's really interesting to compare. So, yeah, sweet basil. I wrote about it. I don't know when I wrote about it. Maybe 2016 when somebody asked me to do a um, a blog post and I came across this thing of, well, why are people talking about the two herbs together? And I thought, right, I'm going to extricate them. So yeah. um, I had a great time. If, when people say to me, what's the, your favourite book? I think everybody will expects me to go, oh, I loved writing Rose, and I did. But hmm. this was my absolute favourite book to write. And was that because of the information that you're kind of uncovering as you're researching it? or Because of the program? information, but also the energy of the plant. I learned so much about myself because that's, you know, that's the whole point of doing that kind of work. You you, you reveal the, the information to yourself, but mm. also from a spiritual point of way, you, you're like, well, what part of my brain, what part of my psyche does this interact with? And uh it's a very much a shadow oil. It, it goes to places that are dark. And uh, I really enjoyed the me that it created. Yes, it is interesting when we when it's known as sweet basil, obviously that's to do a bit more with its flavouring. But I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll unpick that as we go through this discussion. But is it really a sweet oil? I, I would say probably not. No, it, it's, the it's the opposite. And if you look at, um, I, I mean, I really don't even know why it's called sweet because it doesn't taste sweet. You know, it's a herb we eat, isn't it? It's the main, mm. it's the main kind of herb that we eat. But um, I always say to people, if you want to understand the, the energy of uh basil it's worth just going to the supermarket and putting a pot of live basil in from the supermarket into the back of your car and you will not be able to smell the fresh bread you won't be able to smell the tomatoes or any of those things it's like she punches you in the face absolutely so pervasive and that is the energy that you come into contact with yeah now where i find basil has been a a saviour for me and where I've worked with it, and I know that a lot of people do, is for exhaustion. Really, really good for exhaustion. I um, I love it just topically where I'll um, pop it on the soles of my feet when I'm going to bed, but also mixing it with obviously a carrier oil and then just rubbing it on that lower back over the adrenals as well. And I think in a world where a lot of people are overstretched, overwhelmed and overworked, this is a really nice oil to just kind of help to get everything functioning you know, back to how it should be. Not, you know, we obviously have to make those lifestyle changes as well. It's not a magic formula, but I think it really supports in that when we are in these periods of overwhelm and lots to do, you know, possibly a holiday season or something like that. Yes, I think that's absolutely right. I can tell you exactly what the what the herb says to me. She goes, and it is a she, and we'll talk about that afterwards. She goes, get out of your head. Just get out of your head. Just do it. So one of the interesting things was like what well, you and I often were similar that we talk about how like we personif uh, the personification of a herb. Mm. But I could see her very, very clearly. And she she manifested like um, a sergeant in serving in Afghanistan. And she got a, a team of lads underneath her. And she that she was scary, but she was mm. really good fun. But she was very, like, imagine going, you know, you got to do the big jump off the sides of things or out the side of the plane. She'd be like, nope, get out. You know, and yeah. that, that is exactly how she she works with me, especially if I'm like worried about a lot of things or I suffer from imposter syndrome a lot. So the, the the time before I release my books can be very stressful for me because I'm just like going over and over. I don't know if it's good enough. And I'm editing to the point that I'm like, you can't act, you can't move that sentence, that full stop again. You've got to stop. And she's very good at going, just when you press the button, please. And mm. that is, and as, as you say, with, with 
exhaustion that's very good because in the end it just goes you need to sleep now just you know yeah 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 well very much i find with exhaustion it's often because we're trying to be um we're trying to be everything to everyone yes and and this is a really good wing in, in that mental and you know one of my favorite expressions about basil that i it, it's i don't know if it was the greeks or the romans or something that said that basil helps to put a scorpion in the mine and I'm... No, yeah, so it, actually there are so many associations with scorpions. So mm. if you, and the reason for that apparently is, so they wrote about this in medieval times a lot, that if you've got um, basil in the compost heap, then, ba then scorpions will come and nest there. Mm. And there's loads of stories about how there were no scorpions, but suddenly scorpions came everywhere from the basil, and they were absolutely determined in medieval times that it was the basil that brought the scorpion. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And I find, you know, when we think about that energy or the teaching of the scorpion, a scorpion has, like the zodiac sign of Scorpio, very disciplined, very passionate, has that sting. Um, there is a sensuality almost about a scorpion in, in that power that it, it, it has that potential of power. It doesn't always necessarily sting you in that way. And I think, you know, basil also, if I, I'd pair it with a scorpion, I'd also pa um, pair it with lightning. It kind of has an energy of lightning. You know, when lightning comes down to the earth and someone like, oh, where should I stretch today? It's like, bang, it knows exactly what it's going to do. So when we find, like you said, if we're in our head, we kind of, a lot of our exhaustion, I think, is is not real exhaustion or it's not based on real reality, but that overthinking that of, often we, it, it's not Christmas that's overwhelming or it's not work that's overwhelming. It's the mental chaos that goes with it that actually drains us. And when we think about, you know, I, I like to look at each of the oils that are gifted from leaves. They're really there to do with the air element. And I kind of like to categorize them into two groups. So the first group is your big tree leaf oil. So that's your things like your conifers, your spruces, your firs, your pines, and so on. That's your eucalyptuses. They're very expansive. They help to open the mind. Whereas I find with your small leaf or small plant leaf oils, so that's your herbs, like your rosemary, your oregano, your thyme, your peppermint, your lemongrass, and your basil, they help in different ways to focus the mind. So basil does, like the power of lightning and the, that scorpion, refine the mind to go, what do I need to focus on? What's really, really important? And how can I let that extraneous clutter disappear and not not you know not stress me out, not worry about that final full stop and where it should actually go? And as we do that, we can start to replenish the body. Yeah, I love that. Actually, I'm gonna we're gonna we're kind of doing this back to front, aren't we? Should we should we'll talk about the physical in the in a minute, but I'd love to yeah. read you a little bit about the triple goddess that voodoo says is basil, if that's all right with you. So I'm going to have to put them on computer, so bear with me. So I will look odd because I'll be staring at the computer stream. So it says, in voodoo medicine, basil is favoured by Azuli, a voodoo lure or goddess. She stands for love, beauty and passion. She is a triple goddess. Originally, the goddess Oshun, the Reuben River goddess of West Africa, Azulu, sorry, Azili, emerged when her people were captured and taken into slavery by in the Americas by white men. Since pagan of, pe sorry, I can't read. Since worship of pagan idols became outlawed in the Roman Catholic New World, often gods and goddesses took on new spaces of saints so they might still be secretly worshipped. Her parts are Azuli Freda, Azuli Dantor and La Sirene, so yeah, triple go goddess, who often we will see her in Christian art under different names. So Azuli Frida is exquisitely beautiful and is seen with white skin, blonde flow, blow, flowing hair and dancing the green eyes. She loves the finer things in life, passion, sexual power and beauty. She's aligned with the Virgin Mary and Aphrodite and Venus. Her favourite colour is pink and she adores lavish things. Azuli Frida knows how to turn on the feminine charm, adorning her white robes with silver and she uses it to her full potential. 
often thought to be lazy by some voodoo practitioners, she's rarely called upon. Work bores her, and she would rather be painting her fingernails. Azuli Frida doesn't really like women. It said she waves at them with her pinky finger, but she greets men with a hug. And it said if someone is possessed by Azuli Frida, they become flirtatious and seductive. She has three husbands, Dambala, the Sky Father, Ogun, the God of War and Iron, and Agwe, ruler of the sea. To show this, she wears three wedding rings. Despite these three husbands, she is still thought to be a virgin. Azuli Frida has no time for deep involvements. She is an ardent lover, but a fickle one. She loves many men at a time and is the lower of gay and transgender men. Capricious and charismatic, Azula Frida has enticed many men. Her admirers have told her many things and she is the holder of a great many secrets. This has caused her problems because Azuli Frida aims to please every man and so, fearing she might give up secrets when she is captured, her people cut out her tongue. Now the only sound she can make are the sound of her tongue clicking on the top of her mouth. Also known as Azuli Gay Rouge, red eyes, she cries for lost loves and things that have hurt her and is said to always leave any service held for her crying. This is some say because her heart can never be satisfied. We can see this in the symbol, the Vev, a heart struck through by a dagger. She never cries for long, though. She feels the hard side of love, the sickness, hatred and uh, rage, but she is clever. She cries out in her pain rather than keeping it inside and making herself ill. Azuli Frida is often misunderstood as being selfish and vapid, but in truth, she cries, so we don't have to. She takes it on our pain. It's her heart appears through by a dagger, so ours can remain whole. She's probably the most loved of all the lower. In the past, Haitian people would ask the Virgin Mary to call on Azuli Frida. Now in their time of emancipation, she will come to them at their own volition. So then the next part of the goddess is perhaps even more interesting. So Azuli Dantor is the warrior goddess. She is driven by passion and jealousy. In contrast to Azuli Frida, Azuli Dantor loves women and will stay with them right through their lives. She seeks terrible vengeance on those people who hurt women. She said to have two husbands and to adore knives. She's the goddess of lesbians and she is feared for her ruthlessness. Pictorially, we see her depicted with deep scars on her face as testament to the battle she has fought. Azuli Dantor is the Petro aspect of Azuli. These are the newer, darker aspects that rose from the goddess in the times of the Haitian slavery. Women would call out to her when their husbands beat them and slave owners overpowered and raped them. Often we might see Azuli Dantor depicted as a black Madonna. And she is the goddess of motherhood, and in particular, single motherhood. Sometimes you might see her depicted as Our Lady of Lords or Our Lady of Mount Carmel. She, lastly, she is the beautiful La Sirene. So La Sirene is a sea serpent and goddess of the sea. Sacred and sensuous Sirene dances in the rivers, lakes and oceans, but her dance is the banda, lascivious and bawdy. It is beautiful terrifying and she dances it with skill and charm the matron saint of sailors she drinks rum laced with hot pepper sauce and screams obscenities at anyone who gets in her way she is mamon brigitte a descendant of the celtic brigitte and she is called to raise the dead la sirene's protector and guidance to those on the point of death and about to transition from this world to me, here, encapsulated in the triple goddess, we find the first truth about Basil. She is no one simple thing, and every aspect of her is dangerous and terrifying.
Wow. I I'm know. Awesome. See, it's really fascinating, isn't it? So yeah. Give me give me comments if you have them, and then I'll tell you a story based on that. Oh, basically, I was, what I found interesting is, you know, you do see with a lot of mythology um, kind of, you know, archetypes will repeat themselves everywhere type of thing. So, like, Loki is to Hermes and Mercury as to Toth in that kind of, you know, playful healing, that type of, you know, arch so you see these archetypes, whereas some of the traits you were and how they were personified were very, very different to a lot of what, you know, in the traditions that I'm better versed in. Yes. Um, yeah. Know, it's very these, dark, these felt it? like new characters. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, archetypes? yeah, interesting characters. And so th there's... Basil started to talk to me after I'd made a phone call to pay a bill. And mm. uh, the lady on the end of the phone really was coughing terribly. And uh, she'd said what her name was. And I said, oh, uh, and I was, it said her name. I said, that's a horrible cough. Are you okay? And she said, oh, I've had it for three years. And wow. I said, oh, gosh, that's awful. I said, well, as you know, I have bad lungs. I said, I don't know if it's useful. I said, I write books about essential oils. I've written a book about bronchitis. It does sound like bronchitis. Might be worth getting it. She said, oh, I will. Anyway, I thought nothing of it. forgot about it. Anyway, about three weeks later, I got a phone call, and it was this lady from the call centre said, I've read your book, and I want you to take me as a patient because I think you're right. I think that maybe there's an emotional component behind this cough. And she'd mm. been to many, many specialists, many, many doctors not getting anywhere. Anyway, she sat and talked and she she's a lovely lady and she really can talk. So I didn't, it was a great situation for me because I could just sit there and listen. And she was, she felt very strongly that maybe it was something to do with the situation with a relative in her family and her feelings about it that was the problem. Anyway, I said, well, I doused and I said, well, I think we should try some basil. Anyway, so gave her this this basil, met her with her for an appointment the week uh, the week after, and she said, "Oh, it's really really interesting." She said, she, "I will say that she's not a cleaner. I'm not a cleaner. She's not a cleaner." And she said, "I have just been cleaning and cleaning and cleaning." I was like, "Oh, that's interesting because she doesn't clean. I know she doesn't. It's always the first thing that she tells me that she doesn't like housekeeping." Mm. And uh, I thought, Do you know what, I don't think that this is about this relative i think this is about her living situation so there had been a situation in her life where she'd had to give up a house that she liked and she had to take a house that she didn't like but she didn't want to say anything to her uh, partner about it because she felt she didn't want to upset him yeah. anyway so she's cleaning and she's cleaning and she's using this this basil. And basil, I should say, is antitussive. That means it stops you coughing, especially if you've got a <coughs> that kind of cough. Stops you doing it. She says, it's really getting better. It's really getting better. She was really interesting. She said, we're thinking of putting a house on the market. And I was like, interesting, interesting. And... Uh, She'd had the conversation about what she felt about this house and the house was sold very quickly and she moved house and the cough went. And uh, it was really interesting how I really thought felt like Azuli Frida was there. You know, she's very lazy. She likes things beautiful. And what was really interesting was I was working with her and I was cleaning my house too. Mm. And I became very interested in, oh, my beauty, I need to get my face nice and, to, and And how things looked became very, very interesting. But these secrets that she felt she couldn't talk came flooding out. And with them, so did the cough. The cough went. That was the end of the cough. I wow. Know, very, very interesting that this cough, this secret, she can't speak. <laughs> it's like the sound of the, that they say that she makes. Mm. Off it goes. Wow, amazing. Very amazing, amazing. Yeah. very amazing, yeah. Yeah. I want to just kind of make a little comment kind of off on a tangent on that. You know, we, we, there is more and more understanding as the years go on about the interplay between the emotional and the mental and the physical and how, in this case, maybe, you know, a bit of each with a play. Do you think we've also got to be careful, though, not to swing too much into the, the mental, the emotional and the spiritual and sometimes neglect the physical? No. 
No? Okay. No. You reckon? I, I, the Body Speaks the Mind. Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a book by a lady called Deb Shapiro. And to me, that is the mantra of life. That, mm. that you can, you I mean, I can quite happily sometimes use two sets of oils or sometimes or all or, or together, but emotions are what drives physicality. Science is only catching up with that now, but the, you know, the ancients knew that when Descartes yeah. said, I think therefore I am, they completely split that off, and then science became absolutely physically focused on symptoms. But yeah. often the symptoms are to do with the mind. The emotion. Awesome. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you for that. So I didn't realize how great Basil was for stopping coughing, which is another the, the best, the best yeah. book of stopping coughing. Yeah. And it, and it's not like the hacking cough that's like full of catar and and that that's the word, isn't it? Uh, when you've got congestion on your yeah. uh, your uh, chest, you know, you, you use your eucaly uh, eucalyptus, your hip hiccups and stuff like that. But actually, that irritating cough that started when COVID started, everybody is like, we've got that <coughs> clearing your throat. Yeah. Brilliant. And so I would say use basil and also drink warm apple juice, the best thing for coughs. Mm. And in that case, because that is a kind of a throaty thing, is that a topical application, uh, an inhalation? How are you using topical, basil? Topical, yeah. yeah. I use, yeah, topical, topical, topical with, yeah. with, yeah, with sweet basil. And um, it has lots of different chemotypes. We talk about chemotypes a lot, how the, the chemistry can change depending on where it's grown and stuff. Um, and for me, I always use uh, basil CT linalool, so a, a high linalool um, level, but there is a lot of linalool in there anyway. And for that reason, it's antidepressant mm -hmm. um, and also incredibly good for pain, in particularly um, neurological pain. So the nerves and the nervous system, and then funnily enough, nervous system, nerves and mental faculties all come back together again and this is what you get with with basil all the time it always comes back to oh and what's the thoughts doing to the body mm, yeah is, is any any other kind of physical thing while we're kind of touching on the physical that you'd kind of so we've got pain we've got coughs we've got fatigue yeah so all of those things that you would expect like rheumatism arthritis for those kind of, of pains because it's a herb digestive of course yeah. um but also it's quite astringent so if you've got very dirty skin um doing a steam with it is fabulous you only need one drop it's so so strong um but doing a steam with it or you could you know you could put it into cleansers and things like that it's it's lovely yeah. i use basil ever such a lot we've had a lot headaches. of headaches sorry sorry i should have said as well headaches Headaches. Talking about head, well, on, around the head area, we've had a lot of success using basil for earaches. Now, I should emphasize no one should be putting oils down their ear canal, so don't be doing that. But again, topically applied, they're diluted. Um, people have found that really helpful. And even kind of massaging it down um, the neck as well, they've found some real relief in that way. Yes. And also, you a warm compress. So, uh, like a, a warm, do you say flannel in Australia or face cloth? Um, flannel, yeah. So, soak it into warm water, squeeze it out, one drop on there, and just rest it on. Oh, it's very comforting. Yeah. Mm, yeah, beautiful as well. Now, one of the interesting things about it is the uh, its Latin name is is an olisicum. I, I had it before we started. Basilicum oh, is the last oh, part of it. Optimum basilicum. Basilicum, of that's the right. The basil of the basilisk and of the king. Yeah, so that it has that reference to that noble or that royal. And I really love, as we've kind of talked about, how very it's an empowering essential oil. It focuses the mind on what's important. And I feel this is one of the oils that helps you to get back on the throne of your life. How many people's lives are out of control? And I often ask people, you know, are, are you in control of your life or is life controlling you? And we meet plenty of people, and maybe we can all relate to this at different times in our life, where we feel like we are being pulled around and we have no um, no hands on the wheel of life type of thing. And I think this is a really great one for going, 
stop, find that power, like the scorpion, like the lightning, let's focus on what we need to do and take control of our lives. And one thing I get people to do with working with Basil, if they are feeling they have no control, is get up in the morning and, and in a little book write down one intention for the day. Like today, I'm going to sit on the balcony and have a cup of tea. And then at the end of the night, tick it off. And the next day, if you achieve that, start adding to that. Okay, I'm going to have my cup of tea and tonight I'm going to go have a bath and that. And what you're starting to do is if you don't set the intention for how you want your day to be, I find life just fills it. You know, have you ever, I'm sure it's happened to you, Liz, where you kind of go, oh, this is going to be a good weekend. I've got nothing planned at all. I can just relax. And what happens? It's like the universe just goes, <laughs> someone brings you, hey, I'm meant to be moving house and my friends pulled out, can you come down and help me move house? Or just really to remind you of that appointment. And like, if we don't aren't intentional with our lives in every way, it seems like other people's obligations and the universe just fills it up. So it's about becoming the king or the ruler of your life and sitting on the throne of your life again. You know why it's called of the king? No. Fill me in. So there is a story that says that, um, should have looked it up, I think around about 800 AD, the true cross was found, that, uh, that, that Christ's cross was found in a field surrounded by weeds and all around it was growing basil. Wow. Of the king. Of the king. Interesting. Yeah, wow. So it's a yeah, it's an it's a fascinating essential oil. Um, when we when we talk about chakras, where would you place it? Throat chakra. Right. Okay. And what, but what I would say, in argument to what you were saying, I I yes, I agree about productivity. I absolutely agree with that. I also agree with taking control of your life. Absolutely agree with that. What I would say, though, is it is a dangerous oil. And I don't buy, mean that it is a hazardous oil. I mean mm. that if you are in a situation where you are in danger, if you are in like a domestic situation, a domestic violence situation or a volatile situation, you stay right away from it because there is no filter in what you say. Ah, uh, Yeah. So I guess we'll, we'll come back to chakras in a minute and we'll, we'll go for a, a loop around the circle. It, it is that kind of Scorpio, like Scorpio Zodiac sign absolutely, where... Absolutely, yes. Scorpio you, Mars, that's that's the root ships. Um, you, you and, have, so, you and, have, so, yeah. and, you know, if you are going to act like a scorpion, you could end up dead in those situations. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, so it's not a hazardous oil, but it is a dangerous oil. You have to be in the right kind of situation, a safe environment to use it because that you will just be rude and insensitive and nasty if those thoughts are in there. They are going to come out your mouth. And, and, and blunt, I guess. So you've got to be surrounded in people where, you know, often when people have been in positions where they've lost their, their sense of personal power and then decide to know it's time that I stood up for myself, you know, whether that be in, like you said, a domestic violence situation or just sometimes when we decide, hold on, enough is enough, our friends don't like it or our family doesn't like it because they're used to us being a certain way. So you've got to make sure, yeah, I, I get what it, you're saying. It's, an, it's in absolute seriousness, it's an oil that should be used in a women's refuge after the event, yeah. not during the event. Yeah, for sure, definitely. So, yeah, you, you say throat chakra. I actually bring it up to the third eye chakra of a more that mental. I, I find it really yep. narrowing of the mind, so I really like it from the third eye chakra as well. So, yeah, so I think we all need a little basil. You might argue that we all need a lot of basil, except in certain situations. Um, you said you use it a lot. Is it one that you're kind of using on a for a lot of people, for a lot of things? I use it for myself a lot. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, I always use it for if somebody's got like neurological pain. And actually, if you have a look on my Basil book on Amazon, somebody's actually written a review and said how good uh, my advice was for uh, trigeminal neuralgia, that their, uh, that their husband's trigeminal neuralgia was really improved by the recipe that I put in the book. 
So that was interesting to see. So those kind of neurological things, but but particularly like um, speaking, <laughs> speaking one's truth, uh, yeah. dealing with secrets, bringing that stuff to the surface. Because sometimes you don't even know you're holding a secret. You know, it's become yeah. so knitted in your brain as to why you can't speak it. Uh, you don't know why you're holding it. So that's a very interesting one. But but I cannot stress enough how much I think somebody must be in a safe space to use it. Yeah, amazing. Well, Basil, yeah, and another must-have that we need in our collection as well. Any other little thing? You've obviously written a book on it. So, you know, then any other golden nuggets that you think everyone needs to know or, or should we make them wait for the Masterclass and come and find out a bit more about Basil then? Yeah, no, there's loads of stories. I, I, it really, there's so much, there's so many stories in the in the the Basil book. So, but the other thing that's really interesting that comes up a lot in the themes of the myths is obsession, like dark stalking obsession, mm, uh, yeah. and that that's interesting to look at as well. But yeah, read a book, come and talk at the master master class, definitely. There we go. Yeah, but well, so, Michael... uh, yeah, but also. Next week, we'll talk about um, Holy Basil. I really suggest that, obviously, there's two weeks between them. There's a week between them being released. But watch them together because I really want people to understand how different they are um, mm. so that people don't go, Basil, 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 because it's they're really incredibly different. It's like nature went, we need this kind of medicine and we need this kind of medicine. And people are just like now being lazy, but they are so different. Yeah. In the, in the basil world, I should ask as well, the only two that I've really worked with are sweet basil and holy basil. Are there any others that pop up from time to time? Um, there's lot, there's lots of different um, basil herbs like uh, um, Ocumum gratissimum and tenu, tenuiflorum sometimes have, um, and Thai basil sometimes all have oils, but tends to be from artisan distillers that the, you don't really see Tulsi on sale very often, but it is a really mm. important oil. I must admit, I just remembered another basil I've had. It was called, um, or label as America, no, African wild basil, but its yeah. um, Latin name was Americum, the, the second half of it kind of thing. And that, that was an amazing basil oil, like really profound in its spiritual aspect. So, I, yeah, I, I, I smelt it. It started speaking straight away, and I I haven't got any in my collection, but that was amazing too. Yeah, so I said Tulsi then, um, as if people should know. So Holy Basil is Tulsi, if people don't know. Like, why, why did you say a different one? So, yeah, Occumum Sanctum is Tulsi, so that's what we'll talk about next week. Sweet. So we will see you next week for another episode of Fellowship in Essential Oils. While you're waiting for that, make sure you click on the link down below and book in for our February Masterclass when we're going to be looking at all things romance, love, soulmates, sex, everything like that. And, so also, and as I said, you know, we're talking about those oils, stalking, obsession, all of that dark shadow as well with, with, with Sweet Basil. It'll be a fun session, so make sure you make that Masterclass. We'll see you next week. Thanks for hanging out with us. Take care. Bye.